Hey everyone, I'm Marcos and I'm Moxie Boosted, and welcome back to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2020 video. I almost forgot what I was going to talk about there, um, or what I was going to say, but I have something that's really, really cool I want to share with you guys today. For those of you who don't know, I'm actually a really big fan of playing Parish Trap in VGC. Now, Parish Trap is a gameplay style where your team is centered around wearing down at least like two of your opponent's Pokemon, getting them into a situation where they only have two Pokemon left and clicking Parish Song to win. Because they have no Pokemon left to switch out to, in three turns you'll be able to win. Uh, now this, while it sounds really gimmicky, is very hard to pull off if you don't know how to play it properly. So what I'm going to be doing today is sharing with you guys one of my favorite playstyles in the format and how you can play it with the now limited tools we have in VGC 20. So if you guys are excited about that, go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications or whatever, because I just teach VGC. That's what this channel is. All right, but uh, yeah, let's get into it. I actually have a couple of things I want to go over. I have a replay that I'm going to show of a team that um, I made using Parish Trap as my play style. Uh, but first, I'm going to go over what Parish Trap is. Now, Parish Trap revolves around a couple of things. It's maintaining control of the battlefield by preventing the opponent from switching. Um, it involves playing your fake outs very, very carefully because if you fake out the wrong Pokemon, you might lose your trapper and thus your opponent will be able to switch, negating the effects of Parish Song on that Pokemon. And you need to focus on maintaining your Pokemon's HP as long as you can, as well as speed control. So there are a lot of moving parts to this and I'm gonna go over them one by one. First off, we're going to go over arguably the most important part of the entire strategy, and that is the Parish Song user. Now, in VGC 2020, we actually don't have that many Parish Song users, and if you don't count not fully evolved Pokemon, we have three, which is kind of gross. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of gross how little Parish Song users we have, because as you can see, we used to have a lot more. Even like Murkrow had it, Arceus had it, all these Pokemon had it, but uh, it's not like Arceus was ever legal. It, it's more, it's mostly just all these Pokemon. Uh, while they weren't all the most viable, I've seen Parish Song used on Politoed effectively. I've seen Parish Song used on Azumarill effectively. I've even seen Parish Song Dugong, which is kind of funny. But the three we have are Cursula, Gengar, and Lapras. Now, Gengar actually used to be one of the best Parish Trap Pokemon in the format. Uh, not in this format, but in previous formats when Mega Evolution existed. Because Mega Gengar which is now banned because it is not in the game, had the ability Shadow Tag, so it was its own trapper while having the ability to Parish Song, and that was really cool. Along with the high speed, it was able to set up substitutes to prevent it from getting knocked out, and it could alternate that with Protect to make things last longer. On top of that, it had access to Will-O-Wisp and Disable to annoy the opponent, getting rid of options that they would have normally to remove the Gengar from the field and allow them to switch. Now, since Mega Gengar is gone, uh, we are stuck with regular Gengar, which only has Curse Body. Uh, and while it does have Parish Song, I would say that Mega Gengar is one of the more iffy users of Parish Trap. Normally, you'd want your Pokemon to be a little bit bulkier in this playstyle, just to ensure that they can stay in the field very, very long. And just, you know, you need as many party members as you can to pull off the strat effectively. Because Gengar is so frail... Um, it's not recommended to really run them bulky. You could kind of pull it off with Mega Gengar, uh, but not really so much with this Gengar because it has low bulk in every sense. It used to have a little bit higher special defense. Um, but as for a Parish Trap set, I would say that if you want to use it, you would use something along the lines of Parish Song, Protect, of course, Sludge Bomb, and Shadow Ball. However, if you want, you could try doing sort of... You could drop like your uh, Ghost or your... Poison Stab. I would say Ghost is a little bit more important in this format uh, than Poison Stab because there aren't as many fairies running around. Unlike in previous formats like VGC 17 and 18 where we had Tapu Koko and all the Tapus running around running the metagame. But now that we don't have to deal with them, you could probably drop your Poison Stab for something like Disable, which would allow you to protect on the Dark or Ghost type move outspeed them and then make sure they can't use that move anymore so you're safe for an extra turn and then you can protect on the final turn of Parish Song uh, and then switch out as you're as you're going to die uh, to make sure that they can um, you know survive as long as they can because you don't want your Parish Song user to die you might need to click it multiple times in one match it's pretty rare you usually only use it in the end game but you know making sure that he stays alive is really important so Gengar I would say is one of the less viable 
pair sung users. I mean, out of three, but uh, I would say it's a little bit less viable than Corsola. Uh, because Corsola is actually bulkier on the specially defensive side. You could run a specially defensive Corsola, or maybe even just a Focus Sash Corsola if you want to make sure you live at least one hit. In that case, you'd probably run, like, weak armor, because it could also function as an offensive Pokemon. Possibly with, like, a, I don't know, a weakness policy. Or not a weakness policy. Possibly with, like, um, just a full offensive set, like Shadow Ball, Hair Song, Protect, and a final move, like Will-O-Wisp. Uh, however, once again, Corsola... I would argue that it's better as a specially defensive Paris Trapper. Uh, unfortunately, both these Pokemon fall over to Vicious Rend. Vicious Rend is one of the most dominant moves in the format right now. Draco Vicious running around, choice scarfing, killing everything. Uh, so they both fall short, ironically enough. These two Pokemon are higher tier in singles than Lapras. Lapras has historically been a very underwhelming Pokemon in VGC. While it has the tools to succeed, uh, it has things like Icy Wind... It has Parish Song. It, it used to have Scald. It no longer has Scald, though. Um, it, you know, it always had the tools, but it wasn't able to pull it off. It finds a very strange niche now with the ability Water Absorb. It is now a direct counter to Dracovish. You could run a set with Parish Song, Freeze Dry, and instead of, since, you know, we don't have Scald, uh, instead of... Hydro Pump because of how inaccurate it is. You could run Brine because it doubles in base power if they're at 50% HP or less, which with one of the teams that I'm going to show you, or with the only team I'm going to show you today, uh, you'll find that happening a lot because of a certain dynamic the team has. So I would say a good Paris strapping set for this Pokemon would look something like that. If not, drop that for, or drop your Ice move for Icy Wind um, for speed control purposes. But fun fact, in Paris Song, you want to be slower, which is kind of awkward. So. The reason that Lapras is so good is because of that. On top of that, it's very bulky. It has 130 HP, which is really thick. It, I Arguably dummy thick. I would say arguably dummy thick. Where it, it's let down, though, is it's typing. Defensively, Water Ice is kind of terrible. You're weak to Rock, Electric. You're weak to Fighting. You're weak to Grass. Like, there's so many things you can't switch in on. Um, but with, you know, the Water Absorb ability, you do find one extra Pokemon you can switch on, being that Dracovish. And you even get a little bit more HP by switching in on Water Moves. So, it pairs extremely well with one of the Trappers that I'm going to introduce you to, introduce to you, that I'm going to introduce to you in a moment. There are a couple of Trappers in the format. Uh, some of them very non-viable, and some of them extremely viable, and one of them is just so cool. So, now that we have the Parish Song users out of the way, we'll get to... The butter that goes with the bread uh, being the trappers now we have a couple of options here and three of them are g max pokemon before i get into them i'm going to talk about the non g max pokemon we have the least viable one in my opinion being uh sh not shadow tag uh wabafet wabafet has shadow tag uh, but unfortunately it's not able to protect <laughs> so uh as frail as it is the best you could probably run is like a focus sash set with like max HP, max HP because you want to deal back as much damage as you can with counters and stuff. Um, it's weird to say max HP focus sash, but it would probably look like this. Like that would be your, your be your, that would be your EV spread. Uh, counter. It only has a couple of moves. Like let's be real, we are we already know what what Wobbuffet does. That that would be its set. Maybe you could run like Charm on it, but. That's not too effective. So Wobbuffet, just kind of take it off your mind. It's not good. The Pokemon that we want to look at is Gothitelle. Gothitelle got a very, very important buff this generation, and that is Fake Out. Fake Out makes Gothitelle an extremely scary Shadow Tag user. Not only is it able to come in and prevent you from switching, but it's able to stall out an extra turn of Parish Song by going for Fake Out, flinching the Pokemon that threatens it most, protecting on the next turn, and then just eating a hit if it needs to, because it's so bulky. It's 70 HP, 95 defense, 110 special defense. You could run a lot of different spreads on this thing, make it live a lot of different hits. And on top of that, it also has access to Trick Room to invert the speed tiers. Now, Parish Song is based on speed. The slowest Pokemon die last. So, if you're the slowest Pokemon on the field, that means that if everything on the field dies from Parish Song in the same turn, you will win. Make sure you're the slowest thing on the field in that case. So... If you find yourself in a strange situation where your Gothitelle is faster than the opposing Ferrothorn or Snorlax or whatever you need it to be, uh, click Trick Room and that will allow you to die last because of how speed tiers are determined. So that is really, really cool. Um, 
As for other tools that Gothitelle has to help support the team, it has access to whoop, it has access to Heal Pulse, and it has access to something that I think is kind of a dirty tactic, Ally Switch. I don't recommend it. It's very 50-50. Not much skill is involved in that play. It's mostly mind games, which in itself could be considered a skill. I just think it's a dirty move. It's gross. It makes me feel like I need to take a shower. Like I've just been... Ugh. All right. But yeah, Gothitelle has a couple of cool tools, including Taunt. Uh, it has a decent offensive stat, so having this as your trapper is definitely something that you're going to have on like pretty much every single Paris Trap team. Uh, there isn't really much of a reason to run competitive Gothitelle on a Paris Trap team, considering you want to, you know, trap them. So yeah, Gothitelle, extremely viable. I'd say the average Gothitelle set would look something like this. You can also swap out Psychic for uh, Psyshock to hit on the physical side. Um, but yeah. Probably like a max HP, max defense, max special defense, whichever you need for the team. Uh, it'll fill whatever role you need it to defensively. So that is the premier trapper in this format. One of the other trappers we have, my personal favorite, this thing is disgustingly good, is Sandaconda. Sandaconda has a move called G-Max Sandblast that managed to make Sand Tomb, one of the weirdest and lamest moves in the entire game, very viable. Basically what Sand Tomb does is the opponent takes one eighth of their health at the end of each turn and they're not allowed to switch. That is really, really cool. But what G-Max Sandblast does is it traps both of your opponents, not just the one that you hit with the move, but its partner as well. And it doesn't matter if that partner is levitating or flying, it will get trapped despite this being a ground type move. Just make sure you target something that is touching the ground uh, and is not immune to ground type moves. So that's where it's really cool. On top of that, this thing has access to the really, really cool move in Glare. Glare is a move that paralyzes the target it is 100% accurate, so you don't need to worry about missing it like Thunder Wave. And because, once again, Parish Song, the turn that you die, or the order in which you die, is determined by speed tiers, you can paralyze your own Pokemon and guarantee yourself a win. That is such a cool strategy. Um, as for other moves that I would run, probably just like Rock Slide, uh, or Rock Tomb, and Protect. Once again, Protect on your Parish Trapper is very important. Um, I wouldn't recommend Substitute on this Parish Trapper, are on this trapper because when you're Dynamax, you can't have a substitute up, so it's kind of lame. It doesn't work very well for it. Uh, and because this thing has such a high defense stat, you can max out that HP, and when you Dynamax, you are taking nothing on the physical side. Invest a little bit in special defense, I would recommend, uh, because you know you don't have the best special defense. 70 is passable, but um, you know there are going to be some Pokemon that'll hit you really hard. Uh, like Whimsicott is something that this Pokemon struggles against. Energy Ball can two shot it even when it's Dynamaxed. So be careful with that. Uh, on top of that, the Sandblast doing damage at the end of each turn can be paired with Sand Spit. The Sandstorm combined with Sandblast and a Binding Band. <laughs> binding Band makes that 1 8th from uh, Sandstorm turn, or 1 8th from Sandtomb turn into 1 6th. At the end of each turn, G Max Sandblasts Sandtomb with the Binding Band and the Sandstorm damage will deal 22.9% to both of the opponents. Each turn you get a little under a qu of a quarter of their health removed. That is absolutely insane. So this Pokemon is really cool for stalling out. Uh, you could play your Protects very importantly, or very importantly, you can play your Protects very skillfully and make it so that while you're protecting to ensure your Pokemon don't die, you aren't missing out on damage on your opponent's Pokemon. So that is such a cool thing that Sandaconda can do. Sendiscorch can also pull something like this. It just doesn't do it as well because uh, the sun... <laughs> it can't set up sun, but the sun doesn't deal any damage at the end of each turn. Uh, however, the fire spin that it does cause will deal damage. So you could try to run a Binding Band set. Personally, I think Sendiscorch is much less viable. It falls over to a Rock Slide because of its abysmal defense, even when it's Dynamaxed. But it does get access to a couple of cool things like Will-O-Wisp. Um, I would say like Will-O-Wisp Protect, Fire Lash, which turns into Centiferno. And your last move could be something like Knock Off or Leech Life for longevity. Or even Lunge to lower the attack stats of your opponents. But as you can see, the physical defense really lets it down. Special side, it should be able to take like a Hydro Pump or a Scald or whatever. Um, but, you know, Bug Fire, not the bulkiest typing defensively. Because uh, it's going to fall over to rock moves, it's going to fall over to water moves, flying moves, psych not psychic moves, um, but you get my point. It's just not very good defensively. You could find a niche for it, you could pair it up with Lapras, Lapras comes in on the water moves, 
Um, and Sandaconda. Sandaconda pairs up with Lapras beautifully. If you... <laughs> if you're anticipating a Ficious Rend or some kind of water move to hit you, switch in your Lapras, get the health back, be immune to the attack. It's such a beautiful combination. Finally, we have Gengar, which does have a way of trapping now with its G-Max move, but the the thing about it is that it's not able to click Parish Song while it's Gigantamaxed. So while it does have access to Parish Song, it makes very little sense to run, you know, G-Max Terror and Parish Song, because if you Parish Song up, they're not trapped until you click G-Max Terror. And if you click G-Max Terror, more likely than not because of uh, Gengar's low bulk, it's going to faint before you're able to even get the Parish Song off. So it's kind of an iffy one. I don't recommend them. I'd say the two best options are literally just Sandakana and Gothitelle, but you could make Send a Scorch work if you tried. So yeah, those are our trappers. We went over the Parish Song users and we went over the trappers. That's how they function. What I have here is an example team that I've been running in the format, and it is so beautiful. I have a replay I want to show you guys with it. I'll commentate over it. Uh, I make one kind of iffy play, but overall I think it's a good example of how the team works. So, Sandaconda. Binding Band with Sandspit. Drill Run, Glare, Protect, Rock Sled. Drill Run will turn into 130 base power G-Max Sandblast and just destroy the opponents. It's just going to grind out all of their health. On top of that, this attack stat is very specific. Beat Up Lucario is running around in the format a lot right now, and... What, what they do is they use Whimsicott with beat up and they beat up through Lucario, get the justified boost and get up to uh, plus four. What this thing does is when you when you uh, Gigantamax, you're able to live the close combat or whatever move they go for. The max knuckle you can easily hit or you can easily live because it's only base 90 or 95. Um, and G-Max Sandblast is guaranteed to do minimum 96% to that Lucario if it's running 4 HP, 4 defense, 4 special defense, wherever the bulk is, wherever that 4 EV is, uh, it's going to die at the end of the turn due to the Sand Tomb. So that is really, really cool. Lapras, I'm running a very physically defensive site with a little bit of special defense. Uh, physically defensively, I forget what it's supposed to do, uh, but on the special side, it's able to take 3 Thunderbolts from uh, Duraludon. And Duraldon is really annoying because access to Thunderbolt means that normally you'd be able to two-shot Lapras, but with this spread, it's fine. You can make it a three-shot, and the Aguabberry, um, if they get you with two Thunderbolts, that third Thunderbolt will proc the Aguabberry, or the second Thunderbolt will proc the Aguabberry and bring you back up a little bit in health. Uh, Parish Song, beautiful move. I don't need to explain why. Freeze Dry is meant to counter uh, Dracovish and other dragon types in the format like Dragapult. Protect to stall out and brine pair so beautifully, <laughs> pair so beautifully with uh, Binding Band Sand Tomb because there are going to be a lot of Pokemon on the field that are going to be under half health and Lapras can take advantage of that by throwing off 65 base power doubled into 130 base power brine at the opponent, which is beautiful. No special attack investment, but because it's 130 base power, it's going to be doing a decent chunk to just about everything. I'm running a very physically defensive G-Max Snorlax that allows us to live incredible hits once we're Dynamaxed or Gigantamaxed. Um, there are like two play styles for this team. You're not gonna, you're not gonna like Gigantamax your Snorlax when you're running the, these two, but uh, the flexibility of it is really, really nice. Uh, you can run regular Snorlax, you'll be fine. Belly Drum with Wiki Berry is still really viable. And the reason I'm running Wiki Berry is because uh, Pokemon with a negative special attack nature will get confused when they eat it. I am negative speed with zero speed. So if you're facing like an adamant bug bite user, uh, the bug bite user will take your berry and get confused. So that's a nice tech. Uh, body slam, belly drum, protect, crunch, pretty self-explanatory. I didn't want to run stomping tantrum because I already have a ground type move on the team. And I figured my time would be best spent countering things like Dragapult and other psychic types. Like if I face opposing Gothitelle, uh, that's really, really nice. We have a very fast bulky Arcanine. This Arcanine has a 60% chance to live Hydro Pump from Timid Max Special Attack Rotom Wash. It outspeeds Jolly Excadrill outside of the sand, and it's able to switch in on Excadrill's uh, Stomping Tantrum, live the hit, and KO it back with Flare Blitz. So that's really nice. Just being able to live the Excadrill hit is beautiful. Will-O-Wisp is nice for uh, burning your opponents, and if you find yourself in a situation where the opponent has gotten a lot of max moves off and they revert back to their normal form, you can roar them out, not have to deal with the stat changes. Or if you find yourself Parish Trapped, if you find yourself versus an opposing Gothitelle, you can roar out your partner Pokemon. 
which is nice. Excuse me, my throat's getting dry. <coughs> I can't edit these videos because my computer is broken. I'm running off a laptop, so I have to do it all in one take. We have Leftovers Ferrothorn, specially defensive. Nothing special here, but it pairs very well with these Pokemon. It switches in on grass moves for Sandaconda and Lapras, along with uh, Arcanine being an alternative switch in. But it's also able to uh, switch in for um, water moves for Arcanine in case you don't have a Lapras left. And it's just overall very, very solid Pokemon when you're running a bulky strat like this. Finally, we have a very defensive Gothitelle with an Iapapa Berry and Shadow Tag, of course, to trap our opponents. Fake Out, Trick Room, Protect, Psychic. This Gothitelle specifically can take a Jolly Ficious Rend when it's doubled in base power from Dracovish, and it's also able to take a Modest Max Special Attack Choice Specs Shadow Ball from Dragapult. So it's very hard for you not to get your Trick Room off. I would have run Mental Herb, but I personally prefer the Iapapa Berry for longevity. Uh, the Fake Out is really nice because once again, you can stall out a turn of Parish Song uh, and make it easier for you to win. Uh, if Sandaconda goes down and your opponent is no longer trapped because the Sand Tomb only lasts as long as Sandaconda is on the field, uh, you're able to switch in Gothitelle immediately and continue the trapping, so that's really, really nice. But yeah, uh, that's the team. I have a replay for you guys that I want to show you, and this is just a nice example of how the team works. I was able to pull off a pair song in the end of this game. So my opponent leads off with Sylveon and Passimian, and I lead off with Sandaconda and Gothitelle. Sandaconda Gothitelle is one of the most important leads for this team because it makes it very easy for you to get off your G-Max Sandblast, and what that does is it forces your opponent to play very defensively for the next few turns because G-Max Sandblast does a ton of damage, and they're not able to make defensive switches, plus the residual damage. You're going to see how beautiful that is, how much damage these Pokemon take. I go for the Fake Out into the Sylveon because if anything's going to Dynamax, it's not going to be the Sylveon. Uh, he goes for Knockoff, removes my uh, Papa Berry, but I know I can live it. Sandblast does a ton of damage, and with the Binding Band, look at how much health they drop. Look at how much health they drop. I anticipate a hit on my Sandaconda, so rather than going for my Rock-type move, I go for another Sandblast in the Passimian in case it decides to U-turn out. I'll be able to trap the next Pokemon that comes in and deal a lot of damage. It does just go for the Seed Bomb, though. So... Now that my sand is up because of sand spit, the Sylveon is just going to drop. I'm going to take a lot from the Sylveon because of Hyper Voice, but the sand damage plus the sand tomb does that 22%, which is beautiful. In comes Duraludon. I'm anticipating a Dynamax here, so I'm probably going to lose my Sandaconda, uh, but I don't mind it too much. It pretty much did its job, and I outspeed Duraludon, so I will be able to get off my hit here. The Sandaconda, or I know, I don't outspeed the Duraludon. My bad. Um... The Duraldon's going to knock me out, but I don't mind it too much because I wall the Duraldon with Ferrothorn, and Passimian's going to die any minute now. Here's where I make a little bit of a questionable play. Um, <coughs> so, I was anticipating a attack into my Gothitelle, or my Ferrothorn, or not Ferrothorn. I was anticipating a close combat into my Ferrothorn. So, rather than protecting my Gothitelle, I decide to go for a Fake Out, which will stall out another turn. And... I am also able to get a Leech Seed off into the Duraludon. And I'm sorry, I have to cough so bad, but I can't edit this video. <coughs> I'm getting so sick. I'm sorry, guys. But I go for that Fake Out, get a little bit more damage. The Max Wormwind is going to knock out Gothitelle, but once this Passimian goes down, I'm fine. My iffy play was going for the Leech Seed rather than the Gyro Ball, which would have made much more sense in my opinion. Uh, but, you know, hindsight's 20-20. Here I can make a very safe play in case Passimian wants to switch. I can go for a Leech Seed into whatever comes in. But uh, if Passimian does stay in, I can go for the Leech Seed and knock it out at the end of the turn with Sand plus Leech Seed. I could have also just Gyro Balled, but live on the edge, play stupid. Max Lightning comes out. It's going to deal a lot of damage to me um, once the Protect is out and, you know, with the Electric Terrain up. So here the Duraludon's uh, Gigantamax is going to end, so it's going to be able to throw off a regular Thunderbolt at my Lapras in Electric Terrain. But because of the Special Defense investment, I'm able to live it, and Passimian goes down. So, Excadrill comes in, and at this point, if you were to throw out a Rock Slide, I'm pretty sure Lapras would have been able to take it. And Ferrothorn just walls out both these Pokemon anyway, but I'm able to speed up the process here by living the Thunderbolt. High Horsepower does a decent chunk to Ferrothorn. But the Parasong goes out, and my opponent knows that they can't win because Ferrothorn is the slowest thing on the field. So regardless of what happens, Ferrothorn just stalls out this entire game, and I win.
But yeah, that's how you play the team. My opponent just ends up forfeiting. Let me know what you guys think about Parish Trap in the format. I'm personally a huge fan of it right now. I don't think there are many ways to run it. Um, but I was, I think I was able to present the most common ways you're going to want to run it and a good example of a team that plays it very well. So yeah, uh, with that, I'm going to call guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed and yeah, everyone have a nice night and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.